And to hit back on that point, what about your entertainment? Are you entertained by Netflix or by like guitar that you play? Well, switch, cancel the Netflix. You don't need it. You know, what about like hyped up amount of data on your phone or, or like all the games on your phone? Get rid of that phone, you know, spend time with, with your family instead. Mm. It's amazing how addictive those freaking things are. Even if you are good at putting it away, you don't want to be part of the larger uh, group, the larger community, the larger culture that is actually allowing for things like phones to become necessary for other people. If you're able to get rid of your, your smartphone, you should so that other people uh, might have that chance of, of escaping in the future. I think, uh, you know, for, uh, geez, I think, you know, going to your local farmer and actually becoming friends with him is is a huge thing. If you're stuck in the city, you probably don't know a farmer though. So, you you know, you don't really have that chance. Uh, But, you know, as many people as make things around town for us, we try and, you know, purchase it from them instead of from, you know, our, our, our chain grocery stores and stuff like that. And you do this for multiple reasons. A big one being that locality is is attached etymologically with love for a reason it's like you actually can love the people that you know personally but you just can't do that you really cannot love those that you do not know personally um you might have goodwill for some ethereal notion of the you know person trying to you know for the for the guy that's producing your coffee or something like that. I don't know, but there's no way that it's not the same as saying like, nope, Dave roasts coffee. I'm going to buy from Dave. It will give Dave stability at the end of the day. What do I really want with life? I want a great family. I want good friends and I got to make sure that they stay in town, you know? So I'm going to buy, mm-hmm. buy my coffee. Yeah, I think those cool. are just part of the start. So like, that's cool. Uh, a, a few issues that, um, I guess not, not that I have with it, but like a, that, practicalities that come to my mind was you're yeah. saying that it's like i think everything you're saying is brilliant we should definitely do it but first off how would i get people to watch my podcast if they don't have a smartphone um <laughs> it's a really good podcast you should follow um uh, but also more seriously um i think nowadays i feel like especially with like social media and all like all the devices and stuff we're in like the era of the introvert and so me being an extrovert, the idea of, you know, going to my local farmer and starting up a friendship sounds fantastic. I'll go and do it. Well, I'm in the city, so there's no local farmer. But, like, um, it sounds great. But, like, if I said that to my wife or a few friends of mine that are introverts, they'd be like, I'm not going to talk to anyone that I don't know. It needs to be a long process. So, like, I can see a lot of anxiety in that. And do you think that's something that if we got rid of all the tech would slowly uh, disseminate? Um, and then finally, um, the idea, I, I love the idea of buying locally. The problem is, again, it comes back to the money. Uh, often yes. buying locally, it costs, costs more. And if, you know, you're in that rat race of, I need to work to live, um, or I need yeah. to work, you know, how do we, how, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, no, those are two great questions. I definitely think that the tech thing is 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 sapping our energy. It's not giving it to us. And I think anybody that um, is honest with themselves and think back on how they spend days will, will realize that too. Um, being with people, you know, even if you are an introvert, more introvertedly inclined, it is, uh, you know, you can't really be straight with yourself and say that you don't like people. <laughs> you, you live to be with people still. Um, now developing friendships, you know, takes some work, you know, and there's, I'm just, I'm not going to make it, you know, to, why would I ever make an appeal saying that's not true? I think it is hard. Um, and, and especially when it's unnatural, um, there's, uh, it becomes harder. I think that like, it's, like it's inorganic, like you're, you're intentionally going to meet a farmer go out of the way and say, I'm going to start to ask this guy questions, figure out who he is. Uh, you know, that's, you know, could even be weird, uh, you know? And I think that's a great thing about being in a, in a city where people have relocated in order to be able to never have to relocate again, you know, because everybody's trying to find a friend, um, people to rely on and, and people to rely on them. Uh, so I, I, so I don't, I don't want to make that sound easier, you know, so I won't defend it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think for the, in terms of the higher cost of um, 
I think this is the, the, the way to think about it is primarily like, okay, you got option for milk. You can buy a liter of milk for th uh, three bucks or for five. Three bucks comes from the big corporate farm that's, you know, 70 miles outside of town or 200 miles outside of town or 400 miles outside of town, not even close to you. Uh, or it's just your buddy who's right next door and has a cow that milks and you pay a bit more for that. What At that point, what you're doing is you're paying for your friend to stay. You know, you're paying that, that they're able to pay their bills. And, uh, and so instead of having like a consumer surplus, you know, mentality, we need to have kind of a friendship surplus mentality. It's like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to spend more. Why? Because I want Dave to stay in the town or I want whoever to stay in the town. I think that's just a, you know, that's just a, our mentality that has to be, you know, we, St. John Paul II said that the economy should, should be modeled on the family. And that means that you're sacrificing. Sure, there's a division of labor. Sure that there's, you know, different jobs and roles that people have to play. And, um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a community bound in love and, that's in, in money for not using our money to get to heaven and to get other people to heaven and using that prim like having that primary disposition, then, then we're using money wrong. Man. Yeah. It's, it's, this is, it's like, uh, I, I guess I've always known that Catholicism is a big ask, but like, as we're talking about now, it's like, man, this is a big ask. <laughs> but it's, it's funny. Cause yeah. Like, yeah. No, it's, it's not for the faint of heart, you know. That's why Christ talked about picking up a cross, not a pinwheel, right? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, like, this, like what do um, skeptics say? They say, like, uh, Christianity is just a crutch. It's like, yeah, the crutch is on our back. You know? it's like, we've got to carry this crutch. It's hard. <laughs> um, 